Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. And today I am super excited to have channeler Daniel Scranton on. We're going to bring him on in just a moment, but first just a couple of announcements. So if you have not received my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you grab that on my website, drlisajthompson.com or mysticmanta.com. I have also just released my newest Oracle deck, Wisdom of the Galactics. So make sure you go to the website and grab a copy of that. And if you're coming to Hawaii, specifically to the Big Island, come on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using our advanced generation three military night vision goggles. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Daniel onto the screen. Hello, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> so let me um, introduce you to the audience. You have so much good stuff going on here. So Daniel Scranton is a verbal channel, spiritual teacher, and sound healer. He has been channeling the 12th dimensional non-physical collective known as the creators since the fall of 2010. Since then, a wide array of other guys and collectives have spoken through him. Some of those include Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Kuan Yin, Yeshua, the Hathors, the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, and the Arturian Council. He also discovered an ability to channel light languages and healing overtones, and he has used this ability to help others heal themselves and manifest the reality they desire. Daniel works with individuals in one-on-one -on -one sessions, does group events, and teaches a variety of classes, including channeling classes. Daniel lives with his lovely wife, Mari Kreis, and their joyful daughter, Talea. His daily channelings can be found all over the internet. I'm a huge fan of those, but you can always find the latest one at danielscranton.com and on his YouTube channel where you can watch him channel each new transmission. So, okay, so we have a lot to talk about here. Now, the, I, the first thing that I wanna know before we get into the channeling part is I would love for you to share like how you grew up, what kind of household, were you in a spiritual household, religious, something else? And then take us into the transition of doing all of this work you do. My, my biggest memories of my childhood are sitting in my room by myself in suburban Connecticut, a suburb of Hartford and playing with Legos while also simultaneously fearing God. <laughs> <laughs> like God was this being that I had to impress, I had to be good for. You know, I was brought to brought up in the Catholic faith and brought to church every single week. Mm. And okay. catechism and all of it, you know, that um, I bought into hook, line and sinker and so I had this really fearful relationship to God. And the only uh, sort of new agey thing that ever crept into my awareness was I remember watching Shirley MacLaine's um, made for TV uh, miniseries out on a limb. And yeah. I found that to be very interesting, but it, it didn't change me or my life in any way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved on from there. I went to Boston University, where I studied, I always had an interest in Greek and Roman mythology. And when the professor was talking about all these stories that were in all these other cultures, other than the Christian faith, I remember thinking like, well, wait, so they have a story about this and they have a story about that too. So it's not really just my faith, which was already starting to sort of crumble that believes in this stuff and or, or that has these stories so it started i started questioning everything at the age of 18 okay. and it just sort of gradually atrophied from there my beliefs be, then i became an atheist <laughs> <laughs> so you went the whole you the pendulum swung the other way <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so then how did you how did, i guess you know so what did you end up getting your degree in uh, psychology. I was, okay. I was 
figuring I was going to be helping people by being a psychotherapist. And now I'm essentially doing the same thing, but I'm channeling while I'm helping people with the same types of issues that people go to a psychologist for. Right. <laughs> okay. So I guess help me understand the transition from doing psychology to then like, were you learning more spiritual? Yeah. Work? I did, you know, I did psychology. I went and I worked in mental health for three years in Brookline, Massachusetts. And then I got the screenwriting itch. Like I wanted to write screenplays for movies. I always loved movies. So I moved out to California to pursue that. And I wound up discovering um, my spiritual awakening, my, you know, everything that I believe in now through an interview that uh, a boss of mine out there made me listen to um, the Tony Robbins Personal Power 2 series. And Deepak Chopra's interview with Tony was the last one in the 13-hour series. I don't remember any of the other ones. And that one struck a chord with me. So I started uh, reading Deepak's books and listening to his lectures. And that is what gradually woke me up. And that was around the year 1999-2000. Okay, so did you end up writing screenplays? Yeah, I wrote a lot of screenplays. <laughs> okay. Just curious, anything that we would know? <laughs> no, nothing that, that ever got made or bought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so then, okay, so you're in California, you're learning uh -huh. detox work, diving into your spirituality, your screenwriting. What? So then, um, what's the next step that happened in terms of? Uh like, did you just start channeling? Because we have 10 years now. <laughs> ten year, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just put my, I threw myself into all all things spiritual. I, I got Reiki attuned. I was reading The Power of Now and Conversations with God. And then when I, well, Conversations with God was really the intro to channeling. Although it's not really presented as channeled work. But if you right. think about it, of course it is. And then from there, I found Emmanuel's books, which there aren't that many of. But on the back of one of the Emmanuel's books, I think it was actually a blurb from Deepak or somebody like that that said, not since the Seth books. And I was like, well, what's the Seth book? So then I got into Seth. And then from Seth, I got into Abraham. And then I was following Abraham all over the world, really going on their cruises, flying to different cities to go to the workshops, listening to all the CDs. So I was way into channeling before I started channeling. Mm -hmm. And my channeling, a whole, the whole year of 2010 was just all about like blowing everything up and expanding everything. And like, it all happened in 2010 from the very beginning of it, where I was on an Abraham cruise and I was doing Reiki on someone and I felt energy for the first time to then being like, oh, okay, I like this. I like feeling energy. Let me do more of it and more of it. And that led to everything that led me to believe that channeling was possible to me, for me. And then in March of 2010, that's when I had my big ET encounter that got me interested in ETs. And that also, I think, was the final step for me in preparing me to channel. Okay. Wow. So there's so many things that I want to ask. You. <laughs> and I just want to go back to that whole Shirley MacLaine thing. So um, I actually, I grew up in the Rampa School of Enlightenment, which Shirley MacLaine was a student. You um, grew up in it? <laughs> yes. So, I, so I've been around channeling since I was 13. We moved there in 1986 wow. to be part of the school. And so for me growing up, um, being taught by a channeled entity at first, you know, it was super weird. And we were in this tiny little religious town and I just wanted to be normal, but I also really appreciated the information. And so I had this whole like back and forth push pull with wanting the info, but then also again, wanting to fit in, you know, as a teenager. Um, yeah. And so for me, it's, it had taken, so only last year did I start channeling because I had some judgment on it, mostly for myself of like, how is the outside world going to see me? Because I've been trying to be fairly mainstream most of my life, even though I am nowhere 
in the mainstream at all. <laughs> anyway, so when so I, my curiosity question is because you came into channeling a little bit later, you know, in your life and you were following Abraham and that was normal to you. Um, when you decide or you allowed to be channeled through, because I'm, you, we all have to participate to an extent, right? right? Um, were you mentally prepared? Were you ready for people to be like, oh, Daniel is having some, you know, energy come through him? <laughs> I mean, like in an interesting way. Well, I, I was hoping, I kind of believed and thought that I would be completely checked out for the whole thing. Like I wasn't going to, I didn't know I was going to be present during it because okay. as you know, not everybody watching this maybe knows there's a whole spectrum of consciousness that you can be in while you're channeling right. where some people are basically not there at all for it and have to be told or listen back to it to understand what came through them. Right. But then there's people who are like, well, I'm talking to you as whoever right now, and then I'll be channeling and then I'll go back to talking to you as me and then I'll be channeling. And there's those types, which I've seen more of recently because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of interviews with different channelers that I didn't know about recently on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then there's those of us who kind of fall somewhere in the middle of that, where I have this process that they put me through. I didn't decide on the process because <laughs> um, <coughs> it just started happening. You know, all the sounds and the movements and everything just start happening before they come in and they start talking through me in English. But I'm aware of all of it. I'm aware of what I'm saying. Um, recently, I started channeling this group that are saying we're the we're the collective of ascended masters. Okay. And they're so they started coming through me in my own channeling classes where I'm teaching other people how to channel. And um, they would say to me as I'm channeling them, this is just me and them. The whole rest of the class is doing their own channeling. So I'd be muted. And they're saying to me, um, don't try to think of what we're going to say next. Like they're coaching me yeah. <laughs> as I'm channeling. Because I'm 12 and a half years into it. Right. And yet I'm still not the channel or I'll be in, in 20 years or, you know, 10 years from now. So. Um, we're always this work in progress as channelers of putting ourselves into the space, but then staying in the space while we're channeling too, where yeah. there's as little of us participating as possible. And we're just in this real state of allowing for the energy to just dictate everything. Mm -hmm. I love you know. that. Yeah, completely. And well, and that's the thing, um, I guess, because my first experience with channeling was Ramtha and Jay-Z Knight, who channels Ramtha, she is out. Like she is yeah. fully in a deep, the deepest trance. She has no idea what's being said, no idea what's being done to her body. And the, I mean, just her as a personality compared to Ramtha, they're like night and day different. The energy feels different. And I, sometimes I would wonder, like, again, I'm trying, without judgment, just love for her, but I'd be like, does she even listen to what she's teaching or what Ramp is teaching through her sometimes? Um, but- Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> a little different in terms of, yeah, lifestyle yeah. versus- Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. And, um, but so when, and I think that was part of my fear of letting it come through me um, because I didn't want to be out of it. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to have, like you said, I now the way that I was trained, I'm somewhere in the middle of it. And so it's it's an interesting process. So I would love so in March 2010, yeah. you mentioned oh, you yeah, have, I haven't really told that story yet. Um no, so I, <laughs> that's what I want to know next. Like what happened? <laughs> okay. Uh so here I am, the hardest core Abrahamer you've ever met. And and Abraham's like yeah, ETs are out there. They're not really a part of your story. You know, if you see a ship, it's because 
they came in from their dimension to yours and then they left back into their dimension and that's all i knew about ets i knew they existed i didn't think they had any relevance to our lives and that's how i liked looking at it too i kind of i like being in control okay. you know as every ego does you know <laughs> i like being in control so um yeah. when other people in the abraham community would talk about aliens i would just kind of roll my eyes and and tune out and there's one in particular who i'm still in touch with to this day you know we we connect every once in a while and his name's peter and he was in my dream and i had this dream um in the middle of the night where i looked at peter and i said i understand now about the other beings hmm. and that was the totality of the dream we're standing in a desert you know like arizona um, or New Mexico, where all the ET activity is. And um, and I wake up from this dream. I'm fully awake for this. And I start to feel like a chill in the air is what, it, what it, I think it is. But what's actually happening is I'm getting a download of energy or I'm getting scanned or something is happening where energy is coming in through the crown of my head mm -hmm. and moving through my body from head to toe and it is pure, unadulterated ecstasy. It's like nothing I've ever felt before or since that you can feel physically. So I was just in in the bed, like, oh my God. Oh, you know, thinking, what is this? Oh my God, oh my God. I was at that time in a lot of physical pain from a hernia that I gave myself from, from working out too much. And I did not want to get a surgery ever, never seen a doctor for it to this day. It wasn't one of those that's like protruding, but the pain is there. So I thought because the day before this happened, I was in such pain and such fear around it that I wanted to end my life. Mm -hmm. And so I thought this is a healing. I'm getting a healing, just like Abraham says, you ask, you ask, you ask, and then you get what you ask for. So that's what I thought was happening at the time. So I'm, I'm there just going, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm getting the healing I've been asking for. And then I had, and then I'm asking for more. I'm like, more, please, more, please. One more time, one more time. And then I thought, what does this have to do with that dream? And then because I knew, because it was Peter in the dream, that by other beings, I meant aliens, I thought, wonder what this has to do with aliens. And then I got a huge surge of energy go through my body. I was like, okay, aliens, 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 because I just wanted more of it. Yeah. And then I started asking them questions. All this is happening in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, you know, are you physical? You know, are you here to, I remember th asking them, are you here to heal me? And I got nothing. And I said, are you here to play with me? And they gave me a huge surge of energy. And so I'm asking all these questions of like, are you physical? Can I see you? And then finally I open my eyes. And as soon as I open my eyes and look around the room, the energy starts pouring in again. Like it's like from the very beginning, the same intensity of it, but I, I didn't see anything in the room with me, unfortunately, but I um, eventually it stops. And I went from, being someone who meditated every day for like an hour mm -hmm. and just meditated because I needed to, because I needed to feel uh, more energized in my body and meditation gave me that. I went from that guy to the guy who's now meditating and trying to feel energy in his body, which is what everyone who wants to channel should really be doing. You don't want to channel from here. This right. is not where your channeling needs to come from. So you want to be feeling for energy that you don't normally feel. And a lot of people get when they meditate, they get warm sensation, tingly sensation. They get twitches, involuntary movement. That's all a sign that you're tapping into the energy, that you're channeling it. And then eventually you can speak for it. So this happens. In March, I don't start channeling till November. So obviously, it's not I'm not like an overnight sensation type of thing. 
but because I was working with energy now instead of um, just just meditating for the sake of waking myself up, I um, I did I did start to get more types of experiences. Like I would dry heave when I'd get really deep into a meditation. It was like I was throwing up. And I did that at an Abraham workshop, which I knew was not the right thing to do. Like, don't, <laughs> don't be dry heaving in the middle of their workshop. It's there, you know, you, you don't want to be a distraction. So I asked the following day at this workshop in Asheville, North Carolina, what's going on with me? Like, why is this happening? And they basically told me I was going to be a channel. And looking back at it, the first time I got in the hot seat which was five years prior to that, mm -hmm. I asked the question of like, well, what's in my vortex? Like, tell me what's in my vortex. And they told me, you're going to write books and those books will be well-received and you have this ability to, to transmit this information to people and, and, in a way that they understand. So they predicted everything. And then, uh, so this is October now of, of 2010. And so I had a girlfriend who was in London because the other thing that blew up in 2010 was my marriage that I was in for like six years because I just, I guess I just couldn't take it anymore. Like I just couldn't take feeling the way I was feeling anymore. And I said, I, this isn't working. We need to like go our separate ways. And like two weeks later, I meet a woman on an Abraham cruise and we fall madly in love and we're Skyping all the time. And so she becomes the person who I'm going to channel for, for the first time. And a lot of it in the beginning was the energy coming in, but me not being able to speak for it. Okay. So the energy would go like this. And that was it for 45 minutes to an hour. I'd be doing that. Okay. And then finally they started making sounds through me and then they spoke and they said, we are here for you. And they weren't extraterrestrial in the traditional sense. They were a non-physical collective that I later came to call the creators, but they didn't give themselves that name. Just like Abraham didn't say, hey, Esther, we're Abraham. And Bashar didn't say, hey, Daryl, we're Bashar. They made me come up with the name, the creators, which I did while channeling um, automatic writing. And um that's the story of how I started channeling. Okay. Well, so, <laughs> so then, I mean, so that opened the door. You open, you're opening the can of worms then to you've got the creators coming through. That energy, I'm guessing, feels quite a bit different than the archangels. Or maybe it's they're similar. Very similar. They're very similar because they're all, they're in the 12th dimension. Okay. So they're in the same dimension. And, you know, it's like splitting hairs to say this is Yeshua and this is Archangel Michael when you get up that high, you know. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, then I guess between channeling Kuan Yin, Yeshua, the Hathors, Pleiadians, Arcturians, like how do you know who's coming through or do they speak? Who is I coming have, I, Yeah, I have the intention now of who I'm going to channel. Okay. And I, and I set that intention. A lot of times I don't know until they do speak because, like I said, Yeshua, Archangel Michael, they sound the same. They're coming through in the same way, Buddha the same way. So I don't know until they introduce themselves who it is sometimes. But that's just because the, the different beings I channel, I could segment into groups. Like there's the feminine ones. And they all feel the same and sound the same. And then there's the the twelfth dimensional ones, and um, but not they don't all sound the same. The twelfth dimensional ones, um, and then the ET collectives and stuff. You know, it's um, but like uh, it. Uh, I'll just anticipate what your next question is going to be. Um, <laughs> so I channeled the creators for three years straight. Nobody else, just the creators. But because I got interested in ETs. I started getting interested in people who channel ETs. So I had known about Bashar for a long time, but wasn't interested in his in that work until I had the dream okay. and the experience. And then I started going to Daryl's workshops. I started going to Wendy Kennedy workshops, Nora Harold workshops. 
And those two ladies who became my friends and mentors, they channeled everybody. So when I realized like, oh, you can channel more than one being, you don't have to just channel the creators for the rest. I started getting interested in other beings. Plus I was interested in um, nature. Like I've been interested in nature for a long time and love being in nature. So being in nature and sort of feeling fairy energy meant that I wanted to connect with fairies. And then I, then I started channeling a fairy. And so that became the, the, the first one that I did besides the creators. And there's a story behind all of them. Like, but Okay. The Arcturians are really the last ones that I've channeled for the daily message since I that I've been putting out since 2012. And I don't really have an interesting story about how I came to channel the Arcturians. It was just something that I felt I wanted to do. Okay. Did you know who Arcturians were at that point? I heard the name. Okay. You know, and that's it. Okay. Because when I met them, I didn't know who they were at all. I met them four and a half years ago in a meditative journey. Uh -huh. And I, yeah, they're, yeah, it was just incredible. And fortunately, I was sharing with people who I met. And this one lady, she's like, that sounds like you're either describing the Arcturians or the Blue Avians. So I went home and Googled what those were. And the Arcturians, exactly what I had seen and, you know, in the journey, the images of them. And so now it's taken me four and a half years to really understand what that relationship is and my role with them and, and all of that. But they've been the bridge to open up the channel. So now I've got 13 different races that I uh -huh. have done this year, <laughs> but it's new. So like, I get why the Arcturians for you in the daily messages as opposed to some of the other groups. Well, I did. Here's a, here's what I did. I did the creators for a while. I did Ophelia for a while. I did the Hathors for a while. I did um, Archangel Michael for a while, Archangel Gabriel, the founders, Kuan Yin um, and the Pleiadians. So a lot of people channel Pleiadians, of course, you know, and Nora and Wendy channel Pleiadians and, Rob Gothier, Bob, Barbara Marciniak, like there's all these Pleiadian channels. And I don't know if that's why I decided like I want to channel Arcturians. Like I don't, I can't remember what what it was that made me go, well, what about Arcturians? But I've done that several times in my channeling career where I've been like, well, wait a second, how come no one's channeling the unicorns? And then I start channeling the unicorns. Okay. You know, why, why isn't anybody channeling the Buddha? I start channeling the Buddha. So it's, it's sort of like that. Okay. And at the time I started channeling the Arcturian council, I didn't know anybody was channeling the Arcturians at all. Like, but I wasn't Googling stuff either. I just didn't know of anybody. And yeah. I'm sure there were, I know there's a guy who wrote a book on Amazon that people sometimes reference when it comes to Arcturians. So I know other people have, but, um, I'm sort of known for that now for being the, the guy who channels the Arcturians, which I don't mind. You know, it's nice to have a niche. It's nice to be, but I do like when people come to me and say, Hey, let's do a session with Kuan Yin. Let's do, I did a session with somebody today with Archangel Michael, um, the Hathors, you know, I like channeling the others too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times clients will sort of prod me into doing stuff that I'm not really necessarily that comfortable doing at first, you know, yeah. like somebody like, um, Hey, why don't you channel St. Germain for me? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I can do it, you know, like, I don't know. And then I do it. And I actually like it, you know, I actually get into it. And so, um, it's, it's funny how it all works. You know, it's funny how everything sort of plays out in this way. I mean, you know, I'm sure you know this too, we choose our lives right. before we come here. So we, it is orchestrated. Like it is sort of, we're playing this part. Like I'm just playing this part of Daniel Scranton. That's not who I really am. Right. And, um, and of course, when, you know, when someone like Jim Carrey says that now, everybody thinks he's like gone crazy and everything, but it's like what, what 
you and I and a lot of us know to be true. Like this is not our identity. And we basically then are playing this role and, but we get to choose how we play it sort of, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do think that like when people would come to me and say, Hey, you should read conversations with God. And it would take me like three times before I would do it or you should become a Reiki. And then by the third person telling me I would do it, you know, it's like that, like you get the prompts, but you're going to do it. (laughs) Yes. Well, and I love that you brought up Conversations with God, because that was one of my first books as a teenager that I read. And and you're right. A lot of people don't see that as channeling. But channeling, I mean, anytime we're creative, I used to be, you know, a dance choreographer. I used to create jewelry. Anytime we're in a creative mode, that's a form of channeling as well. I danced my butt off in clubs in Boston my whole, you know, through my 20s, like, that's what I was doing. I was dancing, dancing, dancing for hours and hours. And then writing, writing, writing when I got to LA, you know, and then handling. (laughs) Right. So, well, and so um, when a client comes to you, so you do these one on one sessions, and Uh I kind of wish I would have had mine before we did this, but you know, timing Uh it all good. But I have a session with you next week. And so I'm curious, like, Um, when someone comes to you, do they, like you said, some people are like, I need to hear from Michael. I need to hear from Yeshua. Mm. Or is it you tune into the energy and whoever needs to come through for that person is going to come through? Well, a lot of times people do want to speak to somebody, but a lot of times there's also that ambiguity on their part. And they say, well, whoever is for the highest, whoever's going to give me the best, And I'm just like, okay, I'm fine with that too. Like, because I know somebody's going to come as soon as I close my eyes, I know somebody's going to come. So what happens is with my channeling, I close my eyes and there's not even, I don't even have to think anything, say anything, intend anything. It's already, it's understood what's happening next. So what happens is my hands just go up. Mm -hmm. They just go up by themselves and I start making sounds and I start saying yes or okay or, or whatever it is. And um, my my mudra happens, this thing starts happening. My hand, my fingers start flittering like this and the fingers are touching when they're passing each other. And, and then it's like tones, tones, tones. Then they introduce themselves to the person. And sometimes the person doesn't know what to do when what that happens. Like when like waiting, you know, like okay. no, no. Like after they, the the creators or the Arcturians or whoever is speaking to them, they're just kind of like, "Do I ask questions?" So sometimes they need some help, also being drawn out. Because you are you working with people yet one on one? Not yet. Now, okay. what, what I've done, um, <laughs> what I what I feel comfortable with at the moment is people will submit questions. Uh huh. My own private space. Um, I will let that info come through, and I'll word dictate. You know what it, what the message is. Now, this over the last several months, though, I was teaching galactic sessions where it was group, and so I would lead people through these journeys. And during during the meditative journey, the channeling would happen, and so yeah. it was when people were in the meditative state that, and then I would start channeling during that. So that's a, that was more generic messages for them, though, compared okay. to asking questions. Right. Yeah. Um, that's another thing people should probably understand who don't channel already is that at a certain point, you don't even try to channel and it just starts happening. Like yeah. um, getting massaged. That was the first time I ever spoke light language. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing breath work. Um, with other people in the room with me and I'm flopping around like a fish out of water toning and making, you know, Mm -hmm. um, because it's not because I doing yoga and screaming out light language during yoga. Like I, you know, you just start and in the shower is a big one in the shower and in nature, you just, you just naturally open up and things start. And I've heard from Wendy Kennedy and other people that they can't really meditate anymore without channel. Like they're going to channel if they meditate. Yeah. So um, that does happen too. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, so when you, in that intro that you do with your hands, the mudras and the tones, I mean, that is a form of light language, isn't it? Coming through you. The e e e e e e e could be considered a light language, I guess. It's pretty basic. <laughs> There's okay. not many words in it. Um, but I do channel light language like I can channel. I could just spend an hour channeling light language and there's no effort. There's just no, I don't have to do anything. Whereas if I'm channeling in English, I definitely feel like I'm participating in it mm -hmm. as the one who's doing the interpreting, who's listening to the person and what they're saying. And that's the thing I was going to say earlier is like, when you do start working with people, I'll save you some time and just <laughs> and let you know it's going to go way better for you as a channeler if the person is willing to open up and okay. talk and say, this is my story. This is what I want to know. These are the things I'm struggling with because you're not separate from this equation. You're a part of it as the channeler. And you're never just a ventriloquist dummy. You're always participating, even those who are in those deep trance states, whether they know it or not, they're still participating in it. And like um, Daryl Anka, he's, in a, uh, he's not aware of what he's channeling, but he still can't channel in a language that Daryl doesn't know. Mm. So there's, there's stuff like that, that I've come to realize as a channeler too, and through my mentorship with Wendy and Nora that like, don't expect, and Lisa Royal Holt's been another one who, even though I've only had a couple of private sessions with her, enormously helpful yeah. in knowing that like I heard um, Sasha or somebody say in one of her recordings, just because I'm a channeled entity doesn't mean I know everything. Like that, that right there should help every person, whoever wants to work as a psychic, a channel, a medium, like we are not tapping into every piece of knowledge that ever could be given to a person because just like a, a skeptic might say, well, if you're channeling it or if you're, why don't you just get the lottery numbers? Right. You know, well, if you got the lottery numbers and you played the billion dollar lottery, you know, the mega millions or whatever, then what's your incentive to keep working? <laughs> How are you still going to be of service to humanity when you're on your yacht? You know, right. like, um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a plan for all of us too. And you can't, you, if you come to me, I don't know what your relationship status is, but if you come in next week and you're like, well, what's the name of my soulmate? You're not, allowed to have that information before you know it's time for you to meet that person because you'd ruin it in all likelihood if you, you know, you'd look them up and right stack them and you go hey guess what this guy who channels aliens told me that we're soulmates you know right so like it it's there's <clears throat> there's only so much that as a channeler you're allowed to give that you're going to have access to and the best channeling as all of us who've ever watched Esther channel Abraham know the best channeling is when the channeler is bringing through beings that are giving um, teachings. They're, they're giving you the keys to the kingdom. This yeah. is how you, do it. They're not telling you, Abraham's not telling the people in the hot seat, well, here's what you need to do for a living. And here's how you start that process. You go here and, and talk to John Doe and he's the guy you need to talk to. And, you know, it's not, it's not like we're supposed to just be giving people all the answers there that it's more like channeled entities are meant to give teachings and nudge people and help people uncover what they already know that's inside of them. And that's something that Abraham said to me the last time I spoke to Abraham, because I was asking about my channeling. Cause, cause uh, after I started channeling, I was like, okay, now I have all these questions for Abraham. And they're like, you're not supposed to get all the answers for the person. 
you're the one who's meant to draw the answers out of them with your work mm -hmm. that they always had inside of them. And right. so I that's, love that's the thing about channeling that people don't understand. It's not, it's not the answer key at the back of the book. It's the, yeah. it's the energy that the channeler brings through, which you can feel if you're in tune, if you're open, if you're sensitive, then mm -hmm. you realize like, Oh, I could listen to Esther all day because Esther's bringing through, even though she's saying the same thing over and over again, go to the vortex or whatever she's saying now, you know, whatever Abraham's um, analogy is now for it. It's the same message over and over again in different packaging, but mm -hmm. it's the energy that she brings through that's hypnotic. That is that, that is aligning us and giving us the, what we need to then go and live our lives. Yeah, I I love that. And I completely agree. And that's, I guess, what I have gotten most out of listening to other channelers. Um, all the, what was interesting, though, in the very early days of Rampa when I was going, there were personal question and answer kind of days um, where people would ask about their specific lives. But that, that stopped pretty quickly. And then it became more general you know, teaching of like, okay, this is how the universe operates. This is the nature of reality, you know, uh -huh. like that. So um, now as far as working, so you do the one-on-one -on -one sessions, but then you also teach channeling classes. So how often, if, if some of our audience is like, I want to channel, um, how would they go about working with you to learn how to do that? And I mean, because anyone can channel, right? Just right. like anyone, everyone has ability to be psychic and enhance their clear abilities. But yeah, share share about your classes. The the first thing I want to say is that everyone is channeling, because this brain of ours that we think stores information and thoughts and who we are, it's just a radio. You know, the radio is nothing without the signal coming from wherever it comes from to hit the radio and give the radio the music to broadcast or the news or the whatever talk radio. Um, that's what our brains are. They're receiving mechanisms. So we're just walking around all day, tuning our dial to different frequencies to get whatever's coming. And maybe it's a thought you've thought a thousand times. So it seems like it's coming from inside your head, but you actually bump into thoughts too as you're walking through your house. So if you're thinking about a problem you're having while you're doing the dishes one night, and then you go back to do the dishes the next night and you realize the problem is there waiting for you. And you start to get an understanding that we're all always channeling. Um, so what we do when we channel higher dimensional beings and higher frequency energies is we're setting our dial intentionally. And we sort of like, teach ourselves how to do that in a variety of ways. So that's basically what my classes and courses and one-on-one -on -one sessions where I, uh, lessons where I teach people are about. It's like helping that person find all the tricks that they already have within them to get into that state where they can receive something they actually want to receive instead of what their parents taught them. Right. That, you know, that, that money doesn't grow on trees or whatever, you know, that that you think is you may not even identify as a belief sometimes, but mm -hmm. it is. Or, you know, you don't like I said before, you don't realize that thoughts not coming from within your head. It's just around because we have energy fields and we have thought forms floating around. So I teach a huge long course called the Learn to Channel Mega Course, which I do a new one. I start a new one like every three months okay. because it's popular and I love doing some. My favorite thing to do now is teach channeling. <laughs> um, so that's the big one. And then I have a master course on my website, which is all pre-recorded stuff. So somebody can just buy that and then download it and then listen whenever they want. Whereas the mega courses, you show up like... Um, nine times for nine class nine two-hour classes and we do them on zoom and then i set up a private facebook group for people to get together in and and share their stories experiences and and hopefully come together and practice with each other and then i have my one-on-ones um where i teach the channeling 
I do, I will channel the Arcturians or the creators or whoever also in a private lesson to help somebody become a channeler. And then I do um, these little standalone classes. I do a beginners and an advanced group channeling class, which are two hours in length and much cheaper than the mega mega course or working with me because it's a group event that's only two hours. So, Okay. Well, excellent. So what has been, I guess, the most impactful thing that becoming a channel has done for you in your life? How, like, because you were following Abraham. So what's the difference between following Abraham and then now you're, you're bringing forth these messages yourself? Well, it sort of forces you to face all your own stuff, first of all, you know, because before I did this, I was selling books, CDs, and movies on Amazon and eBay. And so I didn't create those books. Mm -hmm. I didn't create those movies, even though I wanted to create movies. Um, I, uh, I I just bought them and resold them. But there was no, I wasn't involved in that. But now I'm selling me to people and my work, and it's totally different. And you have to merge spirituality with the material and money, and it's and that becomes another challenge you face. And then you have people coming to you asking really, really sensitive, important questions for their lives, and you have to be responsible for the answer that comes through. So it makes you face a lot mm -hmm. of yourself and and your confidence levels, which I've never been a confident person, and now that I've been, I think, you know, I look back now at myself from early on in my channeling and I'm like, I thought that after two years of channeling that I should be like this well-respected person that people, and now I'm, and it's like 12 and a half years. And I think like, well, I was just a baby then, you know, like, so you grow so much in the time that you spend doing it. Mm -hmm. you start to become a, a more of an example of what it is you're channeling because you're, you're in it literally all day when you're working with clients and when you're teaching it, you're reminding yourself too of the things you need to know mm -hmm. and remember. And so it, it's basically brought me everything in my life. That's good. You know, my wife and I met because we do similar work and, um, I've, I, you know, I've been able to afford things because I've been much more successful as, as a channeler than I have ever been as anything else. So it's, it's helped me. It's helped with the confidence thing too. You know, like even I think it's because I have this body of work over here. Now I've six books on Amazon and I, and I have thousands of channelings on my website and YouTube. So even though that's still coming from kind of an egoic place, like, hey, my confidence is based on what I've done, but it uh, it has helped me, and and I'm and I'm on a journey like everybody else of like becoming nobody and not not basing my confidence on any of that sort of thing. But at least I've gotten to that point where I've I've gotten to understand what it feels like to be proud of something you've done. And then at the same time, at times I, I still feel like I'm not good at this and I, you know, nobody should be following and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you face everything in yourself yeah. to put yourself out there and say, Hey, I'm a brand. I'm like a, you know, I'm a spiritual guy and a spiritual teacher now. And, and, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I, yet I still have all kinds of foibles and, you know, Ram Das is, was always talking about that too, who's a great spiritual teacher and master and somebody that, you know, exuded love and talked about loving everybody and how that's the ultimate goal for him and everybody else. But still it could always admit like, yeah, and I still have all my neuroses too. <laughs> my anxiety. We are still human living yeah. on this earth. <laughs> <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. Um, okay. So, just to, we have a little bit of time left, but there is a question that I want to ask you from your your perspective, because you have been in the channeling world as a channel for a lot longer you know, than I have. There are some people that channel 
I, I would call them, I guess, lower dimensional beings that are very fear-based. <laughs> and then there are those that come from that higher perspective like you do and all of the other ones that you mentioned. So have you run into that in your world of the people? Oh that are it's everywhere. It's all over you too. <laughs> <laughs> I stay away from it because I am so way happy. more followers than I do, which is frustrating. <laughs> well, right, because well, fear sells, right? So, not like only that, but everybody knows that if you have a common enemy, you know, it's like you, you blame Russia, blame China, blame whatever, blame the reptilians, blame the Queen of England who's now dead. So, you know, apparently we're all free now from her clutches. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Like whatever it is, it's blame somebody outside of you. It's not very spiritual at all to do that, right. to think like, um, and now, now people think, you know, the matrix matrix movies are real and we're really being controlled by this simulation that is not our own creation. I would agree that it's a simulation, but it's our simulations. My simulation is your simulation you are the creator of your reality and you're creating it with you and nothing outside of you. So even if there is an oppressor, even if the Rockefellers and the everybody else is doing this thing, it, they're, they're doing it by agreement with you. Like you ask them to play the villain, somebody's gotta be Darth Vader in the right. story. Otherwise Luke has no opportunity to know what unconditional love really is because yes. he loved his father back in i'm getting goosebumps because i love it so much <laughs> he loved his father back into his father's own redemption so yeah. unless the people from who are channeling the galactic federation of whatever are also telling you you have to love the reptilians you have to love mm -hmm. the cabal you have to love joe biden you have to love whoever else is the scapegoat of the day you know like bill gates all of them you know you have to love them into who they really are or else i remember i think it was like it's some kind of marvel thing maybe it's maybe it was agents of shield or something where they say you know like the the bad the bad um group hydra it's like well if you cut off one head then like five more grow that's all we would be doing anyway if we if we incarcerated mm -hmm put to death all these people that are supposedly doing all the wrong in the world, more are going to pop up because unless you're changing consciousness, unless you are saying, I'm going to elevate everyone else's consciousness by being the best version of myself that I can be and loving everyone, everything as it is, then you're still going to live in that world uh, that's very polarized and very, very dualistic where there's good and bad and there's always going to be black cats to defeat. So right. I think that all of those channelers are well-meaning, even though, okay. like you said, fear sells and they're getting, and maybe some of them have some inkling of like, hmm, when I post a video that says like, you know, so-and-so is in the cabal and they're molesting children and all that stuff. Like if I post that video, I tend to get like hundreds of thousands of views. But if I post this video on unconditional love, I get like 300 views, you know, like maybe they're starting to figure that out and they're, and they're choosing to go dark. But, yeah. um, but I do think that like, you know, even all the people who fell into the whole QAnon camp thing, like they mean well, like they want there to be no more sex trafficking and all that stuff. So they, they're they well-meaning people. They're just not being led to what they need to be led to, which is what's going on inside of you. Like that's the most important thing. That's the news of the day that isn't on CNN and it's not on Fox, but it's also not on YouTube unless you're going to the right places. Like, mm. I, you know, like I think everybody should be listening to Eckhart Tolle and people like that who are teaching you like, hey, it's all inside of you. It's all because of you and your thoughts and what's going, you know, what you're feeling. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I think you addressed that perfectly. Um, <laughs> we're definitely on the same page there. <laughs> but also, 
you know, when, when you're channeling Arcturians, you can't be fear based because they're not fear at all. No, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to bring through a message about how to defeat the reptilians. Like it's just not going to happen. So if somebody's channeling that it's either they're not channeling who they think they are yeah. or their filter is so strongly um, biased towards that type of thinking that whatever they are channeling is being filtered through this chaos that's inside of them around, you know, how it's, how it is in an us versus them world. Right. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Okay. So I would love for you to share again. I know I said at the beginning, but share how people can find you and because you know, I think after listening to you, watching this, people are going to want sessions, are going to want to take your classes. I am a huge fan. Like, I feel like a fangirl here. Um, my friend Brandy introduced me to your work. And so anyway, I just, um, I really appreciate you being on. So yeah, share how they can find you. Well, I have a website, of course. It's called danielscranton.com. So it's pretty easy to find. Mm -hmm. Um once you get on there, you can choose to subscribe to my email list, which you'll get a lot of emails if you do, but it's because I channel um, every day or I'll send out an older channeling that is a timeless one where it, it still applies to the day you're reading it. Um, and I'm on YouTube. Um, my YouTube channel is also just called Daniel Scranton. Um, and you, you know, it has thousands of videos on it of me channeling the Arturians and others. The unicorns are even on there. So right. that's how to find me. <laughs> oh, I, I huge unicorn fan here. I know we've got some unicorn fans in the audience. So. <laughs> that's so cool. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go find a unicorn and see what see what the messaging sounds like. Because yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> well, again, Daniel, thank you so much for being on with me today. And yeah. um, I, I look forward to my session with you um, coming up. And we are do, we are doing this as a pre-recording. So by the time the um, recording comes out live, I will have had my session. So I might just write comments about, you know. Okay. This was. <laughs> and um, anyway, thank you. And for everyone watching and listening, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha.